We're almost hitting the end of the first quarter of 2023, and we finally have enough data to gauge where the market is headed. In this video, I'll share market data on the current situation and where I think it is headed. Stay tuned till the end of the video where I share some key opportunities that you should not miss in this market. Unlike most of my other statistics videos, I'm gonna keep this one very simple. Here's a snapshot of what the stats in Brampton look like. For new listings in March, of 2023 compared to 2022 we've had 695 listings that's less than half of what we had last year now if we look at the average asking price that has also dropped drastically comparative to last year of march we're looking at 1.2 million dollars of an average price sold properties Again, we've seen a dip of 38%. We're currently soliciting at 480 sold properties in the month of March. Days on market has also uh, increased drastically. So at this point, it takes 128% longer for uh, a home to sell, which is 16 days to be particular. An average ask to sale ratio. This one is, is key to gauge the health of the market. Uh, it takes on average 10% less of an asking price to sell a property. So if a property is listed at a certain price, on average, homes are selling 10% less than that. Comparative to last year of March when it was all going over asking. Now, I know these statistics paint a doom and gloom picture when we compare it with spring of 2022. But in my opinion, this is the calm before the storm. Let me explain why. The March 2022 prices were all before the multiple rate hikes we faced. Naturally, the prices will look higher. But when we look at a finer breakdown of the numbers on a monthly basis, they paint a very different picture. Here's why. When we look at this chart, the new listings in Jan were around the 400 range. They've now climbed up to 695 and continuing to rise. Moving on, looking at the average monthly sale price, it has increased by almost 100,000 since Jan of this year. Again, a sign of an inclining market. The days on market, this tells us the absorption rate of a property once it's listed on the market. The higher the number, the slower the market and the higher the chances of it being a buyer's market. In this case, we're noticing the days on market reducing since January. When we look at this chart here, on a monthly basis, again, the days on market has dropped from 23 days to 16 days. Last but not least, as to sale ratio. This tells us the health of the market. In January, we noticed homes were selling for below asking, but now we're seeing bidding wars on properties. That's right. Bidding wars are back, and in my opinion, they're here to stay. As you can see in this chart, in January, homes were selling at 98% of list price. Now, we're noticing homes sell for 100.7% of the list price. Clear indication of a hotter market. I hope this gives you context on why I think we're in a calm before a storm. Prices will continue to climb up unless we have the following changes. Political change, that means a change in the housing rules or tax laws, or Bank of Canada increases the rates drastically, or we have an influx of inventory in a short time frame. Newsflash, we're not anticipating a major change in any of these sectors, which means prices will continue to rise slowly but surely. Are there opportunities in a market like this? Absolutely. In an inclining market where the prices are on a rise, there are always opportunities, especially for investors and people looking to upside. Investors with the spring market around the corner expect more inventory and options to choose from. There are some excellent fixer uppers or rental properties that you can buy, fix up or not, and rent out at high rents. Certain areas that we invest in allow you to cash flow as well, which means you can use those extra funds you make on a monthly basis towards your car payments, mortgage, cell phone bills, etc. Wouldn't it be nice to live financially free and have all of your bills paid for? We've helped a few of our clients reach that level of success, including myself. Once the value of these properties go up, you can refinance them and buy more real estate. We've helped multiple clients buy dozens of real estate just with this approach alone. There are also 
multifamily properties that you can buy underperforming and if turn them around to generate a higher cash flow. The good news is you can turn these properties around with strategic approaches to generate a higher cash flow and eventually increase the net worth of your property. I like to call these properties cash cows because you do the job once of turning them around and then they pay you month after month for the rest of your life. If you're upsizing, I recommend buying your property first in a market like this. This way, once you've found a property you want to move into, you can list your property after, which will allow you to take advantage of the appreciation between now and when you list your property. If you'd like to chat about buying, selling, or investing in real estate, my team and I specialize in the greater Toronto and surrounding areas. We can walk you through our seven-figure roadmap to investments or our hassle-free home selling system. All you have to do is click on the link below to book a free discovery call with us where we'll put together a custom plan just for you. Hope you found this video helpful. If you did, please like, comment, and subscribe so we know what type of content you enjoy the most. Until next time, we provide results that move you.